Now, it was an election that was supposed to unite Nigerians in a common cause, a brighter, more honest, more hopeful future rooted in honesty, a democracy in which votes count, and the rule of law. But for many, the ballot has ripped out the heart of that hope, with the country itself taking the full impact and leaving behind political violence, ethnic mistrust, and a large swathe of the populace feeling cheated of victory. It is now up to the judiciary to open the door for justice and for peace. So the courts have become the mechanism for redress, and the decisions they make can radically improve the integrity landscape in Nigeria and allow a generation to grow up with relative hope. The question is, can they pull it off? Can they help to deliver a landmark moment for this country? Can the irresistible force of honest justice meet the legacy of an election that many believe was flawed and move it with courage and character towards righteousness and fairness? Well, for more on the reforms needed to bring the judiciary to that crucial point, I'm joined now in the studio by Jibrin Samuel Okuteba, senior advocate of Nigeria and a prolific advocate of judicial reform who's written extensively and spoken volubly about Nigeria's election challenges. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you, Charles, for again bringing me here. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like the way you said bringing you here. <laughs> <laughs> well, how urgently do you think that Nigeria needs to reform its courts and its judiciary, especially when it comes to things like elections, petitions, and stripping out unnecessary procedures that cause lengthy delays? Well, Charles, I have to be very careful here. And let me um, give a caveat that I will not dwell too much on election matters because um, uh, I represent... Um, one of the parties in the current litigation before the tribunal. And well, that's fair it. enough. So uh, let's look at, um, uh, first, as a lawyer, I have implicit confidence in Nigerian judiciary. Um, there is no doubt that um, people have some perceptions that are rated as judiciary um, um, had not too good position, and uh, that perception uh, is all over. But it is for the judiciary to stand the test of time and dispel that uh, perception as incorrect. Mm. Um, when you talk about reformation or reforming Nigeria judiciary, there are so many things that are wrong, not necessarily with the judges. But with the judiciary itself, uh, my Lord Honorable Justice uh, Umiadi, the former chief judge of Anambra State, has spoken extensively on what he called the independence of the judiciary. Nigerian judiciary, as of today, constitutionally speaking and in theory, is independent. But I have doubt whether. In practical reality, the judiciary is independent. And when you are talking about independence of the judiciary, first, is the Nigerian judiciary independent in terms of the resources available to it? Uh, it, it does not have uh, power to approve its budgets. Nigerian judiciary does not mint uh, currency. And so it necessarily has to go to the executive. Uh, you will recall that um, there were litigations by Jushun, Judicial Staff Union of Nigeria, mm. and judgment delivered that money meant for the judiciary should be given to the judiciary. But that judgment appears to have been obeyed and breached by the executive. And there are a lot of reasons for this. It is difficult for us to avoid some examples that are gotten from ecclesiastical uh, world. Mm. For instance, why did Saul sell his birthright? Because he was hungry. He needed just something from a pot of porridge so as to keep body and soul together. So the political class appears not to want our judiciary to be financially independent. Nigeria is about the only country where 
I see that what legitimately belong to the court, the judges, the executive arm of government put on advertoria as the number of cars they have bought for judges, the number of buildings they have donated to the judges, as if judges are paupers and beggars. So when you see that the judiciary is having a low rating in the sight of the public, mm. one of these is that Nigerian judiciary does not have financial autonomy. Number two, prior now, and in those good olden days, no one lobbied to be made judges or to be made a judge. You appear in court, the, the lordships who are sitting observe your character, your mien, your demeanor, and your relationship with your colleagues and with the bench. And the character you display in terms of the matters you have in court, it is then that they say, look, Charles, you are crossing over to this other side tomorrow. The emolument was not as high as we have now. But today, to be made a judge in Nigeria, it appears to me that what you know does not matter. It is whom you know that works for you. Either whom you know as a godfather in the judiciary or as godfather mm. in political cycle. And I think it's the late Abiola that says that the hands of the giver is always on top. So when you see the dwindling of jurisprudence in terms of sound judgments, sound decisions, these are products of the recruitment process because Nemodak will not have it. Mm. No one can give what he does not know or does not have. So when, if we are talking about reform, we must go back to the golden days where recruitment to the bench was a demonstration of impeccable character of the lawyer, the magistrate, or the registrar. So in, in your assessment, the, I mean, you acknowledge that the executive arm of government um, is, plays a very big role in the judiciary today, and, and you think that that should not be there? The, the, we, we have... Because it's not just Nigeria. I mean, in, in, in it, America, for it, example, see, the, in, in Nigeria, the, the, the president appoints, the, well, nominates the justices. See, and, in, and so in America, right. judges stand election. Let's not go to America, because like my Lord Justice Nikki Tobi of blessed memory is, hmm. English are English, Nigerians are Nigerians. Theirs are not ours, and ours are not them. Theirs. Uh, 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 theirs. Well, so, English judges don't stand for now, elections. It's now, American judges. We have do. Yeah. the legal profession. It's a profession of purity. Right. And I, I think that we need to agree. There are fine, fine rules and regulations mm. guiding the conduct of judicial officers. And I'm happy that my Lord Honorable Justice um, uh, Philip Umiade, Peter Umiade. Uh, Peter Umiade, sorry, was here when his Lordship said, sometimes you hear the relation coming to you and say, I have a mm. small case. By the time you give opportunity, then it becomes a big case. In those days, what betide you to go to the house of J.I.C. Taylor, for instance, mm. and say, I have a small case. You are going to jail mm. directly. But, but some have, have su suggested that the lawyers are the people who sometimes I'm fa facilitate. I'm, I'm coming to that. Right. I'm coming to that. Look, some lawyers do, but the greatest assets in darkness is light. And lawyers ought to represent light in darkness. But it appears to me that when you are a thief, figuratively, mm. and you are made to be a lawyer, your character is not good. You are somebody that gives to taking bribe, or you have a shoddy way of doing things. Certainly, 
Once you become a lawyer, you will exhibit that. That's why I'm saying that in the process, because there can be no judicial officer without lawyers, mm. because judges are taken from lawyers to go to the bench, and it's an honor to go to the bench. So when you know of a lawyer whose stock in trade is to meet with judicial officers and settled with the judicial officer, either wittingly or unwittingly, mm. such a lawyer is not fit and proper to be made a judge. So I am not disputing that there are some lawyers who may be engaging in such things. And the reasons are not far-fetched. Our disciplinary process in this country is faulty. Now, in order to claim, mm. when you file a process that are outrightly questionable, that are outrightly frivolous, judges have the power to recommend that your license be withdrawn. The problem of Nigeria is that we have politicized and ethnicized and religiousized everything. So much so now that if a lawyer or a judge is being disciplined, you can see some people carrying placard. So, you see, by our training, we must not give appearance of impropriety. Mm. But today, not only improprieties, appearance is given, we defend impropriety on the platform of rule of law and the right to fair hearing. Right. Because as a judge and as a lawyer, your, 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 your conduct is a mirror. You are like a priest. You are not expected to be found in the brothel. But today, in those days, you hardly can find any judicial officer in the public functions. But in order for, our, for some of our judges and the heads of court to, to get what rightly belongs to them, sometimes they go to stand in the airport. Yes, I, I see what you mean. To welcome mm. those who are not as well educated as they are. And they demean the nobility Absolutely. of the judicial. Pro uh, uh, so we have not yet have a state or the executives or people who really want to put the judiciary in the right pedestrian for undiluted justice in this country. Well, that's a very good point and very interesting point that you make. That underscores the feeling that the system at the moment, the judicial system is quite bad. But, but I'm wondering whether that concerns you when you've got something like an election petition that is so fundamental to the future of this country. Well, we cannot go to import judges to decide Nigeria election petition. The election petitions across this nation must be decided by Nigerian judges. And so Nigerian judges are also not judicial robots. They are human beings like you and I. They listen to Nigerians. They hear the outcry of Nigerians. And judges have, um, with all respect, done a lot to keep democracy in the kind of democracy that we now have. Mm. I'm sure you would have seen that even the election petition, you recall that in Zamfara, when political rascality was displayed, they were put to the stricter test of it, and they lost all the people they claim had won the election. And it happened in other places also. I am praying and I'm hoping that the strength of character, the courage to, to resist the temptation of the punishment their mm. lordships are suffering in the hands of the executive, God will give them that strength because whether you like it or not, for those of us who, uh, who go to court almost on a daily basis except on non-juridical day, Sometimes you weep to see judges trying their very best to cope with the volume of work in long handwriting. Yeah, that, that is just and completely unacceptable. Uh, you are expected to deliver X, Y, Z judgments. And so 
the quantity of judgments now become more fundamental mm. for elevation than the quality of judgments. And in talking about the quality of judgments, no one can sit and read comfortably in a very harsh condition. So, judges retire home, they are at the mercies of disco, no diesel. I, I, was, I was privileged to visit a presiding justice somewhere in one of the states, far away. When I got to the house, even the door to the house was in a pitiable situation. That's a presiding justice or court of appeal. And you are expecting such a person trying a case involving humongous amount of money to resist temptation. And so that's why I say that the judiciary have been put at the mercies of the executive. And that is what our political class, they do for purposes of their selfish interest. Right. Otherwise, if... To make them more manipulable. To, because it's like you... you, 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 you it's like you, you have food in your hand and somebody is hungry and you have the capacity to give the food. But you say, I will not give you this food unless you sing national anthem. <laughs> and, and the man may not even want to sing the national anthem. But he's, he needs, he's forced to do he's it. He's forced to do right. it. So let me say this, that Nigerian judiciary, judges in Nigeria without sounding patronizing, have endured very excruciating circumstances. Otherwise, if there were to be one other department, these other departments of government, where money change hands, and anybody can change and do whatever they want to do, and the, the politician propounded the theory of what money cannot do, mm. more money can do, Nigeria would have collapsed. So, notwithstanding this excruciating experience, what a perception, mm. as a lawyer, I, I may not be happy, but I cannot sit here to say that the entire judiciary is bad. Yeah, no, you've made a very good point, and that is the need to restore justice to its central position in Nigeria, and that's why reforms of the kind that you mentioned are absolutely necessary. We've got a couple of minutes before we have to go, and I need to ask you this because you're one of the, you said you were one of the lawyers representing one of the parties in the election um, petitions. Um, will televising the processes of these legal challenges to the presidential election, for instance, be perceived to be a good move a good step in the direction of restoring trust and integrity in the process? I belong to this profession. And it has been um, the, the, the ethics of this profession of considerable activity that judicial proceedings in Nigeria are not televised. We are not going there for drama. We are going there for serious business. And let's agree with you that it should be televised. How does that televising of proceedings change a corrupt judge, for instance? Will you go and slaughter the judge? Because judgments of courts are not based on emotional outburst of the, the public. Because sometimes what the public perceived as justice. It may not be justice. But what I will say is that our judges must deliver justice in judgments. Because there are some judgments in Nigeria when matched with the law. It is absolutely not justice personified. Mm. That is why Lord Dennis is of the view briefly a judge must be master of his court and if there is any rule of law or any precedent that undermines the doing of justice is within the power of the judge to do all he can legitimately to give justice 
Because if you wait for parliament to amend the law, parliament for selfish reason may not want to amend the law. For instance, in Nigeria today, you see that the only cases that have timeline within which to conclude are political cases. And political cases are now overtaking all normal cases and their losses are overburdened. So there are a lot we need to say. Right. But this time is not allowing us to say. Because how many judges do we have? Judges are too few. In the Supreme Court as of today, okay. I'm not too sure their lordships have are more than 12. And they had appeal from all over Nigeria. Okay. So when you come for election petition, we need to have a kind of a system that the Kenyan had right. when we can prove our election petition okay. by affidavit evidence and lawyer demonstrating and arguing for well, their lordship to match the law this and is, take this decision. Is obviously something that can be spoken about over a period of time. But because I, I, I'm, your I'm, time is I'm, too short. I am very glad that you gave us the time that you did, and I appreciate it very much. Uh, Jabrin Samuel Okutepa, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Charles. That's it. Bye-bye.